Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. My name is Samantha, and today we're going to talk about mushroom substrates. Okay, so basically what that is, that is a growing medium that people use to grow mushrooms in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this material that they use, which is obviously looking at it, I don't know if you can see that, a lot of good woody material was used in the creation of these mushrooms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that back into my main compost pile. Now, for the ones of you just joining me for the first time, <coughs> Starkey Farmstead actually composts directly in our chicken coop, as you can hear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle this entire bag that was used to grow mushrooms in. Now I know the people, I'm not gonna say their name, because I didn't ask their permission. But I know the people that grow these mushrooms and they are organic growers, like federally recognized, organically certified growers. And they're very good at what they do. So I'm trusting that what material is in this bag is going to be safe <coughs> to be used here on my organic regenerative farm. So I am, golly, that smells good. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn the camera around, I'm gonna show you as I dump this material directly into my chicken coop on top of what is already composting here for me. And we'll talk a little more about how I'm going to use this material to turn this into basically a mushroom compost. Because right now guys, when it comes in a bag like this from a mushroom grower, this is not compost yet. We have to turn it into compost, so let's talk about how we're gonna do that. <laughs> my very upset roosters we uh got a couple of new roosters a month ago and we kept on quarantine for 30 days we released them yesterday and ever since my main roosters and, there, and one here have been very upset so you're gonna have to excuse him as he voices his uh anger at the fact that there are now other roosters on his property all right guys so here is the bag like i said this is mushroom substrate okay and here is this bag. It was used May 13th of 2020, and it is a spit bag. So I'm gonna reach in, I'm just gonna grab and show you guys. It's a lot of good woody material, but what I'm really, really excited about is all the fibers that you can see, the mycelium that are still kind of in place in this, all right? So it's gonna add a lot of great nutrients um, and down into my compost which is here and you can see my chickens are already kind of checking out over there where i sprinkled some which it's not going to hurt them it's not so i'm just going to keep breaking this up like this here in my compost pile which is in my chicken coop now while we're doing that while i have the camera facing this way let me show you guys how awesome this compost is so this is why i compost in my chicken pen all right look how deep this goes so my girls were in here working with this all day, every day. And if you can see, I've got plants that I pulled up that I didn't need anymore. I have things like this, squash ends from when I was cutting. So you can see there's squash over here. We've got some bell pepper. So I throw a lot of stuff in here. Hay, organic hay that's falling from the rabbit tree. So right here is a racking pen, everybody. So this is how this works. On this right here, if you lift it, you can see the rabbits, okay? Now, what does this plastic do? It's going to keep my chickens from being able to get on top of my rabbit pens, all right? So the rabbit's pee and poo, and yes, it does run the, down the back of that, but it drops below down here. So the chickens then compost that back out and over here into their main coop. We have the quail, which are also set up out here in the main chicken run. And as they eat and poop, the chickens are busy turning that into a compost. So basically what I have here is a chicken coop that is a compost pile. And now basically the chicken run is being turned into a massive composting pile for me all the time. So my ladies, they're always working to my benefit. the first bag that I dumped in here 
And I am sorry, guys, if you can hear that wind. I really apologize. It's extremely windy in southeast Louisiana today. And there's not much I can do. Hey, look, there's a little rooster I told you about that we just released. My roosters are not happy. They are not filling the extra rooster at all. So here it is. I've got it in here. What I'm going... Okay, chicken bite, rooster bite. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my pitchfork and I'm going to work this, this right here from the mushroom substrates back into my compost. Something else that I'm going to do is I'm gonna work some of this into my red wiggler bins. Now, when I did my research, they did warn that this can be a little, this as in the substrate, can be a little high in salt. Okay, so a lot of your azaleas, there were several other like flowering plants. <laughs> That they mentioned do not like that additional salt so you need to do your own research where you're going to be using this type of compost where you've mixed in mushroom substrate into your regular compost basically creating mushroom compost like where are you going to use that now mushroom compost is great to use as a soil amendment to help your your garden soil become more moisture absorbing uh, to break up really like clay soils it's an excellent amendment okay another thing is your vegetable plants really like it it's very high in nitrogen so that is really good now I have what I've got going on here in my chicken coop is a chicken rabbit quail manure compost that I am now mixing in a mushroom com oh, mushroom substrate and it's also got a lot of organic hay, it's got grass clippings, it's got leaves, a lot of woody material that I bring in here and I'm mixing all this together along with the vegetable parts that the chickens do not eat and some of the healthier plants that I've, I've pulled up that I didn't want to chop and drop into my garden, I bought them here so that they will break down into my compost pile. So this is what I actually use to layer part of my worm bin with. I also seed in part of it and I also plant in part of it. My transplants into my garden, I also side dress with the same compost. We make all of this here at Starkey Farmstead. So when people ask me, what do you fertilize in? My compost, I mean, what do you fertilize with? My compost, my worm castings. That's what I actually fertilize with rabbit manure from another rabbitry on the property. Those are the things that I actually side dress and continue to fertilize my plants throughout the year. We don't use any commercialized fertilizers. So I hope that this really helps. Let me get this mixed in and then I'll take you guys with me as I add some into my red wiggler bins. So I just found something so cool and I wanted to share it with you guys. So I feed my rabbits organic oats in the mornings one teaspoon per rabbit guys very very high in protein you will make your girls obese but let me show you something can you see that that is an oat see it that is an oat that fell into the chicken coop that is now sprouted okay so i want you all to think about this I'm now sprouting food for my chickens from my rabbit feed in my compost in my chicken coop. All at no expense to me, no extra system. See, this is why I talk about sustainable loop systems so often, okay? It needs to work like this. Whatever you're feeding your rabbits, now the waste of that becomes feed for your chickens, okay? I didn't have to get a big container. I love you too, you're gonna have to move them. I'm doing a video, go away. So I didn't have to get a big jar, fill it with water, get lentils or get this oats and actually sprout them in my kitchen or my shop, wait three days, come in here and feed my chickens with it. Mine are sprouting all by their own. Oh wait, that's Daniel Collin, the one that's in Fort Mears. I'll get right back to you. to work this amazing 
organic mushroom substrate into my chicken's already established compost pile. And we ran across all of these oats. You know what I'm saying? All these oats going ahead and sprouting. The chickens are super excited. They're finding so many of these guys. That is such a great protein source for them. And I didn't have to do anything except feed my rabbits. So that's what I'm talking about. Get your system set up in sustainable loop systems. Your animals will be able to fend for themselves. Their ecosystem becomes healthier. These chickens are so, so healthy. And look at them. Very, very healthy. Very, very happy finding all these sprouting oats in their compost. And they're eating them. That's, you know, they love, they love sprouts. So you don't have to go to the store and get some lentils and put them in a jar in your kitchen with water and sprout them and, you know, be like, look, I made chicken feed. You can actually just like toss it into your compost in your chicken bin. What oats they don't eat, what lentils they don't eat off the flip. As it gets into this moist, beautiful compost that's making underneath your chicken's feet as they dig through that, they're going to locate all the sprouting oats, all the sprouting lentils, and they're going to eat them, just like she's doing right now for us. And your job is done, all right? And I've got these guys working for me. I think that's the greatest thing about this system, is they are working for me at the entire... And look, look inside of the chicken coop itself. There are my ladies laying their eggs. So I've got a system here that is sustainable. My chickens can roam all the way out into the dog pen out there, but they can't leave the safety of this, of this pen, of this coop. But they don't need to. Everything that they need, they have right here. They have sun, they have shade, they have a compost pile, they have manure underneath here. They have a coop to lay their eggs. They have logs to get on, roosting, roosting poles, water in different places. And guys, when I tell y'all that they are making beautiful compost, like I seriously mean it. This is some beautiful compost. Beautiful. I just wheel a wheelbarrow in here with a shovel and get what I need right out of this coop when I'm ready to plant, when I'm ready to seed, when I am ready to fertilize. So the whole point of Storky Farmstead is work smarter, not harder. I have to run this farm 90% of the time by myself while my husband works an off farm 40 hour job, 40 hour week job. Now I know a lot of you that are watching me are in the same situation. Some of you probably, both of you work off form. Steven and I used to do that. I homeschooled for 20 hours a week off form until, until summer. And at that point, I just could no longer do that with a quarter acre market garden in production. And we, we really began to gear up the YouTube four months ago. We really began tours four months ago. Look at this. This is just rotten. He came up here to take a nap after he, uh, you know, sniffed around, made sure there was nothing interesting in the chicken coop that he wanted. Oh, I just, I just love him. I just love him, guys. This is the best livestock guardian in the whole world. Look at that. Look at his nose. Look at his little booper snooper. Tell everybody, say hello. Tell him your birthday's in October. You'll be three. Will you be three? What is it? Watch it. What is it, Emma? Okay, everybody, let me show you the worm bin and let me show you how I'm going to layer with this much mushroom substrate into my already established red wiggler okay, worm so bin. Here is my bag of substrate. Now, something I want you to notice is when I reach in here, that is pretty moist. Look at that. You see that? Nice and moist. One of the biggest things about a red wiggler worm bin is everything that you put into this bin needs to be moist. All right. Worms will dry out 
and if they dry out they are going to die a lot of people either make their beds wet or they make their beds dry and it doesn't work for them so you can notice i'm just guys i'm just basically crumbling this up to what i call bite size for worms who like me do not have the capability to chew with teeth okay because we don't have them now look at that Okay, you see that? Nice and moist. So I'm just throwing it in. I'm not really mixing it into the bed per se. I'm sprinkling it across the top. I'm not like putting so much that I have to worry about raising the uh, salt content in this bed and then hurting my worms. Now, some of the nutrients that are gonna come into this bed from the use of this mushroom substrate is going to be carbon, nitrogen, magnesium, magnesium, iron, copper. So this is great, guys. This is really going to take my worm castings and it's going to push them to a whole new level of nutritional value for my plants, okay? All right, everybody. Let's review what we just learned. The best way to compost is in your, that's right, your chicken coop. Okay, let them do the hard, heavy lifting for you. They're designed by God to be the best scratchers in the world, okay? They'll also eat out any seeds and any pests that may have still been in your compost prior to you moving it into your garden. Now, the next thing, if you want to go ahead and sprout things like oats and lentils for your chickens as a feed, you don't need to do that if you compost into their coop. All you need to do is make sure that your compost is kept partially shaded and that you turn it regularly. And when you toss in those lentils or those oats and the ones that they don't eat, the next time you turn it over, they'll drop down into the soil, down into the compost, they'll get moist and they will sprout. When you roll it again for your chickens, they'll dig out those sprouts and eat them as a feed and a protein source. So that's really interesting. The third thing was that it is so good to take the mushroom substrate, put it into your compost and into your worm bins. You don't need a lot of it. It can raise the salt content in your compost and your vermicompost, but it will also add a lot of carbon, a lot of nitrogen, a lot of iron, a lot of zinc, a lot of magnesium, and a lot of magnesium. So I hope that this helps. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share our videos. We are all about sustainable loop systems and showing you ways to work smarter and not harder. So we are asking you guys to row in our boat and let us row in yours. You guys have a blessed day. Thank you for watching Starkey Farmstead.